Good morning and welcome to First Christian Church of Lansing. We are so glad to have you here with us. Um, I'd like to point out a few things. Uh, if you are at home and you'd like to have a chance to give to the church, um, you can go to lansingdisciples.org um, and the, there's a donate now button on there. Um, if you're in the sanctuary, there is a plate outside. Um, and next we will join the praise band in our opening hymn, Mighty to Save. Thank you. Um, 
So once again, welcome. And if you're like me and even joining us tired this morning, we are glad to have you here. I, my brain is obviously a little tangled because I forgot to mention um, that if you uh, would like some prayers today or uh, you have a word about things that we need to say for you, uh, go ahead and drop that in the chat on Facebook or text the church and let us know um, before Pastor Paul is finished with, finished with his sermon and we will get that in today. Now, if you um, please give me a moment for the call to worship. Listen, listen for the voice of God naming us all. Holy, beloved, cherished, valued. We believe you delight in us. Make us people who recognize and proclaim your beauty and goodness in unexpected places. Surprise us, challenge us, transform us. We trust in you, Holy One, to reveal to us the sacredness of every life, of every way of being, of every physical manifestation of your spirit. May it be so. All right. If the kids want to scooch up closer. I, I know usually I go kind of big and bold and kind of crazy for children's time. Forgive me, because today we're going to be a little more chill. I just have some hopefully helpful words for you. So today, Pastor Paul's going to be talking about a story from the Bible about um, uh, Philip, pardon me, and uh, a eunuch. Mm, the easiest way to describe it for you guys is that a eunuch was a person whose body had been altered. And that could be in many different ways. Um, somebody could have forced it on their body they could have chosen it for their body or they could have been born with a body that was a bit different than everybody else's and it's kind of important to this story and as you'll find out as we go through it i think that um this wasn't common it was very rare and that these people were seen as outsiders eunuchs usually men were seen as not able to pray in the temples. They weren't able to be a part of many just normal gatherings and things. But in this scripture, because as Jesus tells us all the time to love one another, in this scripture we see that God still says, go and love everybody. Everybody's welcome. No matter if their body was forced to be different or if they chose it to be different or if it was born different, I want it that way and they are welcome. And that's the important part for today that I wanted you guys to have. No matter what your bodies or you or anything looks like, God wants you and you're welcome. All right, and now I will pass it over to my friend, Jerry. Good morning again. The uh, scripture, as was mentioned, is talking about someone who, as you know, uh, Eli mentioned, was uh, changed. And he was reading a scripture that he didn't understand. And Philip was sent to him to uh, help him understand that. And in terms of our uh, giving, which this is where we are right now, we many times don't understand what those donations or our tithes and offerings do to help under to help people understand we we have gifts and tithes and offerings that we can give to the church and those gifts tithes and offerings help the church help others to understand god and especially our, his son jesus and as was mentioned, also, you can give, if you are in the church, in the plate out in the lobby or by contacting the church, you know, at lansingdisciples.org and, you know, give that way. Also, as hasn't been mentioned recently, you can mail your tithes and offerings to um, uh, First Christian Church, 1001 Chester. Lansing, Michigan, 48912. 
those gifts, tithes, and offerings do help us help others understand God and his, his son, Jesus. Thank you for listening, and let's continue with our service. Thank you, Jerry. Our scripture reading for today is Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. <clears throat> An angel from the Lord spoke to Philip. At noon, take the road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. So he did. Meanwhile, an Ethiopian man was on his way home from Jerusalem, where he had come to worship. He was a eunuch and an official responsible for the entire treasury of Candace. Candace is the title given to the Ethiopian queen. He was reading the prophet Isaiah while sitting in his carriage. The spirit told Philip, approach this carriage and stay with it. Running up to the carriage, Philip heard, hmm, Philip heard the man reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you really understand what you are reading? The man replied, without someone to guide me, how could I? Then he invited Philip to climb up and sit with him. This was the passage of scripture he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he didn't open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was taken away from him. Who can tell the story of his descendants because his life was taken from the earth? The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, about whom does the prophet say this? Is he talking about himself or someone else? Starting with that passage, Philip proclaimed the good news about Jesus to him. As they went down the road, they came to some water. <clears throat> the eunuch said, look, water, what would keep me from being baptized? He ordered that the carriage halt. Both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water where Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Lord's spirit suddenly took Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip found himself in Azotus. He traveled through that area, preaching the good news in all the cities until he reached Caesarea. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. My goodness. Today is a new day and we're trying some new things today as you probably already got the idea. We're having to turn speakers on and off, but by the 23rd, we're hoping when everybody's back together here, we can do it with uh, video as well as the spoken word to our speakers. Today's message, however, comes from uh, this reading and I entitled it Following the Verbs. Now, if you know anything about verbs, verbs are action words that show off or are explaining an action. And before, before we get into this today, I'd like to join together in prayer and bring us together so that we can hear God's word in new ways. Let us pray. God of deep soil and luxurious growth, you call us from our shallow selves to find our depths in you. May we abide in Jesus alone who can teach us who we are. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts as one be pleasing in your sight. For we ask you through Jesus the Christ, the true vine. Amen. You know, the last five weeks we've been talking about what it is to belong, to believe, and then to, uh, I should say, behave and then believe. It's a way that Jesus brought people into the church or the greater body of Christ. And so today we have a story about a eunuch uh, who was also something more. He was an Ethiopian bigwig. Um, but even with that, he was a God-fearer. A God-fearer. Jews gave this name to those who uh, were not Jewish, but yet they expressed their faith in God fully. Yet no matter how devout this eunuch was who came from Ethiopia, might have seen he would never be involved or welcomed in as a convert. I mean, after all, he was a eunuch. Might be saying to ourselves, what does that mean? Well, the Hebrew law was very explicit, and I 
<laughs> when I read this, I had to think about it more than once before I incorporated it. But in De Deuteronomy 23, 1, the words of the law say this. No one whose testicles are, are crushed or those penises are cut off shall be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. In other words, another way of saying it is in a harsh way is that um, with this condition that would normally not be of the person's choice, they're not welcome into the temple of God. So this person that we're talking about today, this Ethiopian, was a eunuch. He was male, yet he was not quite man. He was a sexual misfit according to the laws of the time and place. So what was the real issue to, the, to those in this time and place? The issue for the Jewish was this. He was not able to have a family. I mean, he couldn't have one. So they thought of this as a divine curse. That being the obvious disqualifier for the participation in temple observances. And that was in Jerusalem as well as anywhere else there was a synagogue. Yet I have to give credit to this Ethiopian. I mean, he could have, he could have had thumbed his nose at the Jews and their God, but he, that had treated him so shabbily. I mean, for a sexuality that was thrust upon him, he was excommunicated, if you will. Yet regardless of his physical condition, he forgave them. More than that, he was intelligent, he was articulate, he was skilled and talented because he had risen to the top of the queen's highest officials. He was to Candace, if you will, a secretary of treasury and the chairman of the Federal Reserve all rolled into one. Can you relate to that today? So the question is, we have to ask ourselves is why would someone like him be willing, be willing to take all the insults of another religion when he could have stayed with those who were like him, Ethiopian, and avoid all the shame of his beliefs? Good question. Well, something we must have convinced him, that is something must have convinced him that the God of the Jews was not an ordinary God, but God of the Jews was God. That is, was Yahweh, was El Shaddai, was Elohim, was Adonai. He was above all things. That is why he had gone to Jerusalem. And that's why he was on his way back from Jerusalem, a city thought of people of faith. They wanted to go there because it was God's town. It was a place where God reigned. It was God's place to be. Truly, God fears even today, as it were in those days. Look forward to the pilgrimage to Jerusalem. I know my, it's on my bucket list. I've not made it yet, but I saw my bucket list to go someday. But now he was going home. This unit was going home. And as he rode, he read a scroll from Isaiah. And might I say, an interesting choice for a eunuch. I mean, Isaiah had some words of hope for men and friends, friends' condition, that is his condition. Yes, in the prophet's vision, the age to come, when we think about the age to come, was a picture of a eunuch no longer excluded, no longer complaining about being a dry tree, as the scripture says. Because God would reward the faithful eunuch, that is the one who believed in him and did the things that he asked, with the lasting monument and a name in the temple. That is the place of holy of holies. It was actually in the temple where he was not able to lay a foot in at this particular point in time, which would be far better than sons and daughters of Abraham. We find this all in Isaiah 5, or 56, 3 and 5. Yet at that moment, he was struggling because the passage he was reading was Isaiah 53, 7 and 8. That is what we call it today. And the words read this way. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, like a lamb silent before the shearer. So he go, does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice is denied him. Who can describe his generation? And I'm going to add this a little bit because it's, it's, it's 
posterity, his posterity, his generation, his posterity, for his life is taken away from the earth. Can we say posterity? What posterity? This man that he's reading about had been cut off. He will have no posterity, no descendants. He is like the eunuch, no children, no family. It's almost as if the eunuch were reading about himself, his own life story. I mean, no wonder he wonders that day as he's bumping along the road. But suddenly out of nowhere in today's reading, our friend meets, that is our eunuch friend, meets another traveler, Philip, on the desert road. Now, we who are familiar with this story know it is not an accidental encounter. Oh, no, God had sent Philip there to help the seeker in his search for truth and belonging. And I just not only do want to give credit to the eunuch with keeping the faith in spite of the obvious obstacles that he in, in encountered, but let me give credit to Philip too because of his willingness to follow the Lord's lead. Now, I don't know how many of you know what Philip had already been involved in, but I mean, Philip was one of the first of the deacons chosen by the apostles to assist them in the social ministries of assisting those in need. There were only seven of them that the 12 called. But however, one of the things that happened in that short period of time was this, that the deacon's job described expanded, no surprise, to preaching and teaching as well. And just prior to the encounter on the Gaza Road where Philip is at with the, our friend, this willing worker, Philip, had been a successful preaching ministry in Samaria. He had been a successful preacher there. So can you imagine his words, what it might have been for us today if he was asked to do the same thing? I mean, he might have said something like this, gee, God, I'd rather, rather stay right where I'm at. The city, with all its people, its activities, all its great needs, this is a good ministry here in Samaria. Let me keep on keeping on. Can you hear those words that we might use today? We don't want to leave. This is a great place. Why should we go? But to his eternal credit, Philip was willing to get up and get going, even down a dry, dusty, and albeit dangerous wilderness road to a lone figure in the desert heading to Ethiopia. So Philip comes running up, if you can imagine or picture this, comes running up to this swarthy, swarthy friend of ours. He chases down this carriage and he talks to the guy as he jogs alongside. Can you imagine this guy jogging along right next to him in the robes and everything? And he finds, he finds him struggling with this scripture, this from Isaiah, and asks him between the attempts of taking a breath, can you imagine that? I do you understand what the reading's all about? That's a lot to ask a person. Well, a eunuch from Ethiopia responds, how can I, unless someone guides me, can you help me? Climb in here, I would love to understand. Well, once Philip was in the carriage, the eunuch asks, about whom may I ask? you does this prophet say this the sheep to slaughter a lamb before the shearer justice denied life taken away about himself or about someone else i want to stop there for a minute because quite frankly at this particular point in time the eunuch is not a jew he's not one of the 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 community so in the community they would have thought about it being either about israel about the prophet himself or someone else. So for him, it was either the prophet or someone else. That's kind of interesting. So how did Philip respond? Philip heard the questions and he answered them. It was very simple, it wasn't complicated. He did not try to theologize to the man. There were no creeds to follow. There was just the story of Philip's friend, his friend. No doctrines, no affirmation, just his friend, Jesus. And you know, for those of us who really want to make a difference for Jesus in, in this world, 
uh, we might want to take his form of evangelism uh, just to tell one person about that special someone in our lives, that is Jesus. And that same way we might ask, do we really want others to belong? And if we do, we just need to simply tell the story. Tell the story about Jesus, not some sort of ultimate, if you will, insurance, uh, but about it, it's just a fire insurance, but about him and what he has done for us. That is in our own life, in the life of our family, the church, no theologizing, not like anything more than Philip. If the question is asked, you just answer it. I mean, perhaps our, our experience has been much like Paul, the apostle who was on the Damascus road and we all of a sudden had this change in our lives. Or maybe we're like uh, myself, who is one who was born into a family who went to church every single day that was open and you naturally realize at an older, older age that you were indeed able to trust Christ and call him your Lord and Savior. Then think about what he's done in your life and the comfort you've had in your trials, the happy follows fellowship and times of joy that you've experienced. And really just try to put them into words like Philip did for this eunuch. Something I like to call friendship evangelism, and I think he, Philip, really uh, showed it. Well, regardless of how, whatever Philip said to him that day, Philip said it made a profound impression upon the Ethiopian. So he sees this water off to the side, and he says, what is to prevent me from being baptized? Now, I mean, Philip had shared and given this man this idea with where religion had excluded him before now he was motivated and he was welcome so again he says what is to prevent me from being baptized that's a darn good question now you know our account gives no indication that philip hesitated yet he might have he might have i mean he might have thought something like this what would prevent me or prevent you well let's start you're a different race. You're a Gentile. Your color, that could be a problem. Then there's a the sexuality thing. You're different. And as far as some folks think, it disqualifies you from the temple. And of course, you have not jumped through all the hoops, the theological hoops, making profession of faith in just the right way, using the right words. So what would prevent you from being baptized? Lots of things. And if you'll give me just a few minutes, a little bit of time, I'll think of some more. I mean, Philip could have said these things, but Philip did not. To Philip's eternal credit, and I hope ours and the church's eternal teaching, there's no objection, no precondition. Philip baptizes this eunuch in the stream. Think about that a minute. This Ethiopian eunuch, so long an outsider in the household of faith, was now welcomed as a member of the family. He belongs. It was rare in a wonderful moment, and it's nowhere repeated anywhere else in the Bible, but here very specifically. So how does the story end? Well, if you know the story, you know that Philip, the witness, is gone. It's miraculously he disappears after he baptized him. The eunuch, the scripture tells us, is rejoicing. He rejoices. He went upon his way. The tradition, the Christian tradition tells us that he's the first Christian missionary to Africa. Praise God. Am I right? But we have to ask ourselves something today. We have to ask ourselves something today. Because we have to ask it seriously. Now, with whom can we share the story like Philip? Good question. Good question, especially for us today. Because the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch tells us all belong. All belong to God. All were created by God. All are one with God. So it is my hope this day that this story will again enliven you in your faith so that we all may be Phillips. 
We run against somebody who doesn't understand what is written, then we can answer them simply. Tell them of a person who came, lived, taught, healed, and died so that we might have a new world, a new way of living. May I say, let it be so. Will you pray with me? Most gracious God, as we come together this day, your teaching is challenging. So many times we want to throw up fences and walls and of all types to keep others out. But that's not what you taught. You taught all belong. All who follow that which you have taught. All who love all unconditionally. As we say, agape, love. You have given us an example to follow, Lord. And it is that example which makes a difference in this world. It makes it a world of love and caring for those who are less than or different and those who are not. You make us one people, no matter where we are. May you bless our hands and our words and our feet, that we might be your presence like Philip, to do what you ask without question. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we always come to this time and we have a, uh, we ask a question or we ask, would you like to be part of that body? And you know, sometimes we, how do you want to say, um, hesitate a little bit because we see the walls that we put up. And I know a lot of young people today, as well as older people who have not been one with Christ, have questions, they have fears, they have doubts. But I want to make that invitation today. If you want to know more about Jesus, who is the Christ, then I would ask you to make that commitment to him today, verbally, in a prayer, uh, wherever you're at, no matter how you want to call it. And at that particular point in time, start living a life of love, a life of oneness with all people. Extend your hands to everyone and help, regardless of what you get in return. Then when the time comes and we can come back together, which hopefully in this church is going to be the 23rd of this month, Pentecost Sunday, the birth of the church. You'll join us and with strong voice, make that commitment. Say, yes, I want to be part. So during this time of this, this, this invitation, I would ask you to think about this as we again hear our praise band this Sunday, as they sing this, who is my mother? And who is my brother?
Uh, we come to a time of prayer this Sunday, and I know many, many have things in their mind this day. And we look to God, a God of love and compassion. So would you join me this Sunday as we lift up our world and those in our community in prayer? Let us pray. Loving and compassionate God, only you are holy and altogether too wonderful for words to capture or to, for our minds to comprehend. Yes, God, you have formed us, made us, created us, and called us into union with yourself with a fellowship of your spirit, the Holy Spirit, to peace and joy in your eternal presence. In this, you have granted us a world. You have placed us in a garden. You have given us companionship and responsibility. So in this, Lord, we ask you to help us to be worthy of these things, to make us both hearers and doers of your word, as Philip was. Yet in this world you have given us, God, there is so much that is wrong. We also see in the world that so much that is right as well. Revive your spirit, that Holy Spirit within us, that we might be right. And we prove that this would be stronger than wrong. Make us people who will listen and imitate you. Make us people who are able to listen and imitation, make imitations and show our blessings to others who are in need. So in this time of prayer, oh Lord, we hold before you the special concerns that have been placed in our hearts this day. So here are our prayers, we lift them up to you, knowing that you always hear them, even if they're just in size, so quiet that no one can hear. My first prayer is for the world in itself, O oh Lord, the killings that have been going on are non-ending. We again have word of more shootings this week, more deaths and more injuries in our own country, but not only there, Lord, but throughout the world. We hear of anger from many nations, threats being given to other nations. We pray that your love will be Put upon all people's minds and hearts that we might find a, a time and place to talk, find new ways to resolve issues. We pray for those who have experienced COVID-19, even though it seems to be ebbing again, dear Lord, for we, among many, have taken the vaccine, but at the same time, we pray for those who haven't, those who cannot have it yet, those who need to keep distance in more than one way. But yet let's be mindful of all that is necessary so that we can come out of this to whatever normal it would be. We also lift up prayers for our church family. Brian Dodge, he asked for prayers for his family and friends and for his friend Larry, who was murdered recently in Lansing. We pray for their strength and their understanding and the ebbing of grief of a sudden person taken away from them. We also, again, received prayers from Corinne and, and Jim and family, for a family friend. After a month of chemo to destroy cancer in the body, the MRI showed no shrinkage of the tumors. And what does it mean? It means two more months of chemotherapy for this person. And there's always that doubt, will it be today, Lord, will it be tomorrow, or not at all? We pray for them and their family of two young men and a husband who need your strength in this time and understanding. And give strength to that young woman who needs your blessing. Yes, we have approached you, O Lord, this day, and we ask all these things of you in the name of the risen one, your son, who taught his disciples and us to pray as one. Our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, when we come to the table, I always find it amazing. It's a simple table. But it's where God's presence is. God's word said this, God was, uh, God's love is, was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but God loved us and sent his son. I can say it's just a simple table. We come to the table seeking to show our adoration or our love for God and, and Christ. Perhaps we should come showing our amazement instead. It was, after all, God who loved us first. So come, one and all, whether you be at home or whether you be here in presence, to Christ's table. For we invite all who are here and who can hear us this day. And yes, that is all. For it is Jesus gave to Paul and Paul to the church in Corinth on the night he was betrayed. He took a common loaf. He raised it to God and he blessed it and he broke it. And then he gave it to all of his disciples and said, take, eat, for this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper was, was the custom, he filled the cup with wine. And upon doing so, he again raised it to God and he blessed it. And again, he gave it to all disciples. And he said, take, drink. For within it, you will find a new covenant for the remission of many sins. But you know, I think the more important thing is this. That we do remember. For he said, as we eat the bread and we drink of this cup, each time we gather... We proclaim his glorious death and return. She's on. We're good. She forgot herself. She left herself muted. <laughs> oh, cool. I just did that whole prayer muted. <laughs> Yes. Okay, I'll do it again. <laughs> Sorry. Um, dear God, <laughs> we arrive at this table every week full of our own thoughts and worries and anxieties. We, we worry that we might be muted. We worry about what will happen so much that sometimes we forget to think about what is happening. We take it for granted that we welcome everyone to this table and we forget that welcome is a verb. It's active and it takes effort. Help us to truly welcome by actively listening to the quiet ways we might better extend and even better yet validate our invitation to the table. So that as we navigate through this constantly changing landscape of mid to post pandemic realities, we can truly become a place of welcome and comfort for all people, both here at the table and in our company. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
So as we come to this ending time, sorry. Uh, like we say, we're trying new things today and they don't always work perfectly, but that's God's blessing as well. So as we come to this ending time, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and all that you come in contact with during the week. Now, our closing hymn this day is Go My Children With My Blessing by Kate.